how does it work? I want to unpack this whole, where do you store your money overseas? Hey guys, it's Gene here. I recently saw Robert Kiyosaki on a YouTube video say that when the dollar crashes and unrest spreads across America, I will be fine because I have millions of dollars worth of gold stored safely overseas outside this country. So I have some questions about that. that. That's amazing to me. How do you get millions of dollars of gold? I guess a guy like him just write a check if you're a New York Times bestseller. And I guess before that, I guess he was he was pretty financially well off. I guess he was a hardworking entrepreneur type business owner, business starter, business builder. I think his whole story is that he got out of, came home from Vietnam and like a, a regular job isn't for me. I'm sure the guy worked his butt off and earned every penny he's ever made. I'm not questioning that. I'm just saying, how does it work? I want to unpack this whole, where do you store your money overseas? And then <laughs> let's say that, let's just say when the shit hits the fan in the United States and you get on your plane and leave and go wherever, wherever it is you're going, Panama, Singapore, then what? <laughs> so your gold's stored somewhere. I'm just not sure I fully understand that. So, all right, so how does he get a million dollars worth of gold? Let's just say he wrote this book, Rich, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and he made the money and he paid the taxes on it, okay? He, he made the money off the book and he continues to get royalties off the book and the IRS gets their chunk of this every year. And so let's just say he's got, let's just use for the sake of argument, one simple number, $1 million, okay? And so he's got $1 million and he wants to put it in gold and he wants to store it safely overseas, and he somehow wants that to be his safe haven nest, nest egg for the SHTF scenario that the United States, as the, as the story goes, is heading for. So let's go backwards. How did he get the money over there? Did he, did he get on a plane and go to Pan? Let's use Panama for our example. I, I guess it could be Puerto Rico, it could be Switzerland, it could be Hong Kong, it could be Singapore. I guess it could be any number of places. I don't know. Let's see. I already I already typed this in. Best countries to move your gold to so the U.S. government can't touch it. Austria, Singapore, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Panama. I, I already mentioned without looking at this three of the five. The one was Austria and the other one was uh, Liechtenstein. Cool. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's just say you go over there and you want to open an account. All right. So I've got my 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 millions of my one million dollars is in my u.s account this is after irs taxes are paid i'm robert kiyosaki i got this million dollars it's in it's denominated in u.s federal reserve currency and it's in a u.s bank account so i go over here to panama and i open an account right i don't know i take whatever five thousand dollars with me and i go on a little mini vacation to panama the minimum amount I need to open it. Let's just say that's the, I don't know, minimum amount I need to open an account in Panama. Doesn't raise any questions. $5,000 isn't that money, much money to carry on your person when you travel. $10,000 isn't that much. Supposedly, $10,000 when you travel is this magic threshold that raises eyebrows with TSA, ICE, and the IRS when you travel and you have to explain yourself. I personally uh, find the very concept of explaining myself very distasteful. And you know, I don't, I don't know why I should explain to anybody why I'm carrying a hundred thousand dollars. I could easily justify a one hundred thousand dollar vacation. I could easily go to the Bahamas or to a resort in the Caribbean. I could go to Switzerland. I could go on a two-week ski vacation and drop $100,000 extremely easily. I bet I could I bet I bet could go to a place like Cuba. I guess I'm not allowed to go to Cuba right now, but let's just say I was allowed to go to Cuba, but my U.S. credit card and my U.S. debit card and my U.S. ATM card, none of that works. So I have to have cash. And a family of four is going for two weeks. Let me do some math here. Where's my calculator? Use my calculator. All right, so 14 days. Let's say I'm getting a really nice suite, so it's 1200 a night. That's 16800 But I don't want to share that with my kids. I want to get them one, too. So that's times two. So that's $33,600 just for lodging. A couple of, I don't think $1,200 is that totally out of line. Two rooms, $33,600 for two weeks, plus some sort of like, eight. let's say it's 18% tax. Now we're at 40000 and let's just say I drop a lot of tips and my kids, I want to encourage my kids to be big tippers and my wife's a big tipper. So let's just say we drop 150 bucks a day in tips, 14. 
I didn't do math so good in my head. 2100, I uh, lost my number. Anyway, it was, we were right at 40,000 40, plus 2100. That's 42,000, that's in tips. But we're gonna eat out a lot. We really like restaurants. We're gonna eat out a lot. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, drinks. We like, we like a good bottle of wine with every meal. So let's just say we're gonna, family of four, uh, I'd say a good meal, a good dinner is going to be 500 bucks. A good lunch is only going to be about 100. Breakfast is on the house. Let's say we spend 600 a night, 600 a day on food and booze. Times, times 14 days. So that's plus 8,400, $50,500. My wife and my daughter are gonna to go to some boutiques. They're gonna buy some clothes and they're gonna buy some jewelry. They're gonna spend 10,000 a piece, so that's 20 grand. So now we're at 70,500. My son and I are gonna book some guided fishing expeditions. They're gonna be $500 a pop, we're gonna do three of them. So that's gonna be plus, plus 1500 that's 72 grand we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna book a helicopter volcanoes or something that's gonna be plus 500 oh wait a minute we're not booking it we're not in the Caribbean we're on a ski are we on a ski vacation I forgot what I said <laughs> it's 72,500 oh plane tickets plane tickets are cheap so we got round trip from Houston to let's say we're going to let's we'll say we're going to Paris it was 700 bucks so 20, 2800 for the plane tickets that's $75,300 see look what I'm trying to demonstrate to you is it's not that hard to come up with a legitimate reason for carrying $100,000 I just think it's stupid that you have to explain yourself I know it's drugs and terrorism. Well, Uncle Sam, you lost the war on some drugs. So let's get that out of the way. So that's that. now you really just have terrorism. This, this is bull crap. This whole war on terror is a reason to have people, you know, self-violate their right to remain silent. Tell me I'm wrong. Stop me when I'm way off base here. Oh. So I'm my wife is gonna go to the spa a bunch of times and she's gonna drop a thousand dollars at the spa at least three times. She's gonna bring her daughter with her a couple of those times. So let's say they spend five thousand dollars at the spa. That's eighty thousand. Um I'm gonna want a couple of massages myself. But I'm going to spend most of my time fishing. So let's just say I'm only going to spend fifteen hundred on massages. It's eighty-one thousand eight hundred. My son is going to want to do some parasailing, some more fun sports. Probably going to want to rent a rent a jet ski a couple of times. My son and daughter are going to want to rent jet skis. That's going to run us a grand. Let's just say it ain't cheap. I mean, renting a boat for a day is a grand. Jet ski, five hundred dollars, whatever, twice. So that's eighty-two thousand eight hundred. I really don't think it's that hard <clears throat> to say why you you're carrying a hundred thousand dollars in cash on you. Anyway, back to the question. Robert Kiyosaki takes his million dollars, and let's just say he wire transfers it. There's there's no law. I mean, you've already paid the IRS your taxes. They don't get a cut when you transfer it. So now we're just talking bank fees. I don't know how much bank fees are for inter how much are bank fees for international wire transfers? So guys, my little thought experiment that if you're still with me, that we're going through what am I missing here? So he's got his million dollars, he wants to convert it to gold. He goes overseas, takes his million dollars, to, and he transfers it to his Panama bank account. And then he goes and he takes physical possession of a million dollars worth of gold. Let's just say he bought it. Let's say he bought it in 2000. <clears throat> uh, what was the price? Let's see if I use Google. Can I just, do I have to type it? 
What was the price per ounce of gold in December 31st, 2000? Here is information from SD Bullion. Dude, it was only $285 an ounce? Are you kidding me? It was like $19.60 today. Damn. All right, let's let's keep this simple. Let's just assume this dude has a million dollars in gold stored somewhere in a place like, what did you say? Panama. All right, so his gold's in Panama. He's <laughs> paying somebody whatever, 1% a year, 3% a year to store it at the Fort Cobby Depository in <laughs> Panama. Fort Cobby offers top of the line security to customers just like you in their private vault and safety deposit boxes, all located in Panama's free trade zone. A short three hour flight from major cities, you can now move your wealth to a stable country without having to worry about excessive regulations or governments peering into your private affairs. Dude, this sounds awesome to me. I mean, let's just, let's just, I'm going to lay this out on the table. This is freaking awesome because the logic to me is this. Let's say I have $10,000 today, August 22nd, 2020. I have 10,000 US dollars. I already paid my damn taxes on it. The IRS already got their chunk. Okay? I want to convert that to gold. <clears throat> What's the gold price today? Gold price right now is, let's go to goldprice.org. 1940 an ounce. Did you see that where I said it was, where I looked at it in 2000 in our thought experiment, Robert Kiyosaki was buying gold. What was that? Oh, that was my phone, sorry. Did you see that thought experiment, experiment? In 2000, Robert Kiyosaki was buying gold. At, what was it, two? <laughs> That's insane. Price per ounce was $284.90. My calculator. So if I have 10 ounces of gold times 284.9, that's $2,849 worth of gold in 2000. I fast forward to 2020 <laughs> and my gold, $2,849. And my gold is now. Nineteen thousand forty. So, how do I do the math here? Nineteen thousand four hundred eight dollars and ninety cents. Nineteen. Let's say nineteen four oh nine divided by twenty eight forty nine. Does that mean it's six thousand eight hundred and ten return percent return? So let me do it again. Nineteen four oh nine divided by twenty eight forty nine. Is that a six thousand eight hundred and twelve point five seven percent return? Anyway. Again, my question is, how does this freaking work? Does Robert Kiyosaki get on a plane when the shit hits the fan in the US and move to Panama? And then does he take out his gold and go to the street and buy groceries with it? Does he pay his landlord rent with it? Does he convert it into the Panamanian dollar or whatever it is? That's, isn't that pegged to the US dollar? So if it stays pegged to the US dollars, it's purchasing power just as crappy in Panama as it is in the US and what was the point of leaving help me understand what this guy means when he says I have millions of dollars stored offshore so that when the shit hits the fan I'll be fine please people help me understand thank you
Let me do some math here. Where's my calculator? Oh, wait a minute. We're not booking it. We're not in the Caribbean. We're on a ski. Are we on a ski vacation? I forgot what I said.